A new Batman takes to the skies of a futuristic city. Here's a look at the DC multiverse Batman Beyond. Genetically engineered Terry McGinnis becomes the Cape Crusader in a more techno-advanced Gotham City. Of all the figures to be released in this wave, this was the one I was looking forward to the most. Can't wait to get this review started, but before we do that, we're going to first figure out how tall Batman Beyond stands. Now, you'll notice, screaming from the mob, you'll notice that I've gone way past his head. Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, I'm actually going to the very top of his ears to tell you that the figure stands 6.6 .6 inches in height. Centimeters, 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 centimeters centimeters you're looking at 16.8 centimeters tall to say i'm flabbergasted by the amount of accessories this guy comes included with is an understatement yes somebody's i'm sure somebody said flabbergasted anybody no i've asked the mob nobody nobody said flabbergasted okay it was just me to come include with all this figure is some stuff batman some stuff Lobo, and we'll look at the Lobo stuff first and foremost. So he comes with the lower under ruse. There was a viewer, actually, that didn't really like. Thought I was insulting the line by calling these under ruse. I was just having some fun. Just having fun. That's We have to have fun when we're reviewing toys, after all. I'm going to take the lower under ruse, and I'm just going to snap this into his torso. There we go, just like that. The, this is actually a soft plastic. I guess they've done that so that you can fit then the legs in fairly easy. Let's see if actually that pays off. So I'm going to bring these tabs. Do I need to bring these tabs down? I need to bring these tabs down. Should have spent some time off camera to loosen those up a little bit. And snap that into place. One thing I'm already pleased with is the fact that the under ruse, there he goes again, calling them under ruse. Uh, I like that they, they have like a rubber over top of them. So for, for, for starters, it makes things a little bit easier. And yet still I struggle with it. You know what, we'll try the other side. Maybe what I can do is sandwich them together. Make a hope sandwich. There we go. There's one side. Okay, that side went through pretty easy. What about this side? This side struggles. Maybe I'm struggling. What What's going on here? There's the socket. There's the peg. Oh! Error, give me strength! Okay, you know what? We'll have to do this. Hold on one second. Alright, finally got that in place. Um uh, okay, we'll talk about that. We won't talk about that just yet. We'll talk about this when we get all this stuff together for the figure. Okay, so he's got two. Looking at the body there. Okay, we're looking at two heads, two different head uh, sculpts. One has a big smile on his face. Uh, I don't know if his hair, is his hair supposed to be that far back? I feel like that's not the case. The hair looks like, the hair looks like it needs to be glued a little bit more further forward. Like that. I don't know why it's sticking so far back like this. Anyways, there's two head sculpts. One with the goggles, one with just a regular face sculpt, I suppose. And one has the smiling face with this very obvious hair gap here. I'm going to go with... I kind of like this one, to be honest, even though the hair is wretched on it. I'm going to tab that also into place. And it just sits on, it just sits atop of a ball joint. There we go. This figure, I feel, is going to start giving me serious problems. Why is the, do I have to bring that head, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, you know what? I'm going to move this figure over. I'm going to put Lobo down just for a second. Just for quick, early thoughts about the figure. He's way, sh he's way shorter than I thought he was going to be. In fact, like this part, I was surprised when I was plugging everything into place. Well, you were here. You bared witness to my hesitation once everything was kind of put in place. The figure seems really small, really squat. Uh, he certainly pales in comparison to the DC Universe one that we had gotten uh, as, I believe it was an SDCC, or he probably was the Matty Collector, I can't even remember, but I've done a review of him so many years ago. This one does seem a lot smaller. Okay, 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 so 
There's the Lobo. You know, we'll get into a more extensive review of him in the next video, the next go around. Producers are telling me you have to speed this one up because we still have to, of course, look at Terry McGinnis. So I'm just going to move Lobo out of the way. Rest assured, he is going to be looked at in a future review, the one right around the corner. So mark that on your calendars. If there are places that you need to go to, if you were going to go the art exhibit on that day, you may want to just kind of postpone your plans until that review goes up. It would be kindly appreciated. Okay, so let's have a look at the Batman Beyond Terry McGinnis. I have to say, I love this figure. It's not without some problems, but the problems are small, I have to admit. Uh, he is a very small frame. The closest frame that I could probably pinpoint it to being is that so happens to be the same one that we saw with Kid Flash. Same exact body. Uh, this body type works extremely well for younger, smaller characters. And proportionately, he fits a lot better than the Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond that we had gotten from the DC Universe line, which basically was just utilizing the exact same mold as all the other Universe figures. This one, again, just proportionally is a lot thinner, a lot more slender, a lot more sleeker, and I think he works a lot better. Now, like I said, he does come with a fair share of accessories. It's so funny, though, that we look at these hands yet again. These are the same hands that we looked at for Kid Flash. They are also the same hands that we looked at for Superman. And once again, I'll just bring the Superman one in so you can see. It does look, in fact, like it's the same hand, just shrunk down just a little bit. I mean, that's obviously not the same hand. It's the opposite hand, but you'll see, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, same hands. Three figures. Three out of four figures, based on that, they really should have also just given Kyle Rayner the exact same hand, so it was consistent across the entire board. Uh, the hands are flat, as you can probably see. They're ideal for flying, I guess, if you want to have the hands spread out. Because he does also come with his backpack, his wings. Now, those wings just plug into place, like so. And... Uh, helps also if you don't have it completely lopsided. It does feel like it wants to sit a little on the lopsided side. It seems like the wings are kind of going like this. Let's see if we can correct that. It shouldn't be a case where they're stuck in place. Although if you look at it, it's not quite a circle. Instead, it's actually like a hexagonal uh, shape. So when you are turning it, I'm just take tech, oh, see right there. The hole on the back, didn't really real, realize that initially when I had to figure out the packaging, but that the shape of the hexagon has to fit the shape of that hexa hexagon. And plugging in place, does it not seem like that wing is higher than this wing right here? All the times that I plugged it in off camera, I didn't even realize that it does look lopsided. See if I can fix that. Well, you can't really fix it because the shape has to fit into the shape. If it was a perfect circle, fitting into a perfect circle, we'd be having a perfect world. But that perfect world, unfortunately, doesn't quite work in this instance. The cape sort of seems throwaway. Not that I would literally pick it up and throw it into a garbage, but uh, the inside is okay. The outside, really, if they had only painted this in black, one side the black, and then the interior the red. I don't think it would look as bad, to be honest. Even if the trim, like you would think, looking at the trim here, the intent from Mattel was to paint this, the edge that is, only in the black, and leave the interior this kind of cranberry color. Why they left it completely just vacant of color, it just escapes me, in all honesty. Again, like this back section really should be all black. Now, again, the cape doesn't plug into place, so that's a big problem. That's a bit of a hiccup right there. But then he comes with all these other accessories, and I, I can't help but feel... Here's, the, here's one of them, for example. Now, if you look at this one, he comes with four of these. I don't personally think Batman Beyond needs to come with four Batarangs. They don't look like they're different from one another. I mean, if you look at all of them, they look like they're the exact same shape and color to one another. Uh, some of the paint is a little scratched up on one of them, but at least you have, you know, like I said, you've got another three that uh, you can pull from. At the very least, that they probably only need to give them two. I mean, there's no other place where you can keep these extra batarangs. This is almost a case where I don't feel like 
you don't need all this extra. You don't need two sets when he only has two hands. And even then further to that, he only has one hand that can actually hold the Batarang. Batarang is a little on the thicker side, at least it's not gonna break, but it only fits really in one of his hands. The other hand is closed shut. And certainly these flat hands aren't gonna come in handy anytime soon because they're not gonna be able to hold the Batarangs either. So really, you've got four Batarangs and one working hand to hold them. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Okay, okay, I get it. If you were gonna give two Batarangs, because why not, Batman loves Batarangs. If you're gonna give them, say, two of these, there's two, I would have discarded, not again throwing them into the garbage, but I would discard, discarded the idea the very concept of giving four, save the cost on producing two extra ones, and just spend that extra money to paint the outside and the frame of the wings actually in black. That's what certainly I would have done. The other thing that Terry McGinnis does come included with, I'll take the Batarang out, is a variation of his head sculpt. Now I'll just grab this without dropping it. He has this head sculpt and he has this one. One shows the teeth, one does not show the teeth. One shows slightly a little bit more enraged Batman Beyond. This one does not. To change out the head, we're just gonna grab the top, wiggle it off the ball joint until you hear snap, and hopefully it's not a snap that signifies that you've broken the peg. And just wiggle that back on. It's always harder to put it back on than to take it off. And you've got this head sculpt. In all honesty, let me just bring the other one in. There it is right there. In all honesty, I kind of like this head sculpt a little bit more than this one. Generally, just because when I think of Batman Beyond, especially like the original cartoon, Terry McGinnis half the time was showing his teeth. So I just kind of like that head sculpt a little bit more. And to go to the full effect, because I'm all about the full effect, I'm gonna unpeg the hands as best I can. There we go. A little finicky hands, I have to admit. I'm just gonna unplug this hand here. There we go. And uh, we're gonna replace the hands. We're just gonna put the hands in, thumbsies go in. That's the best way to remember. Gonna wiggle this in. There's one, there's one. And we're gonna take the other one. There's the second one right there. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, there we go. And uh, just, to, just to show you, I'm doing all of this for probably what will work out to be very little of a payoff. There we go. Just plug that into place, and uh, you can have Batman Beyond whoosh, flying. Again, man, that wings, those wings seem so absent of color. Could have just easily just shaved off, shaved off some of those extra, extra unnecessary accessories and just given us a better paint job on the, on the wings. Anyways. Other than that, speaking of paint, there's really little to no paint on this guy. He's all black plastic. I don't think I would be crying foul for the fact that he doesn't have a lot of coloring, but at the very least, the red emblem there on his chest, I feel, myself only, that could use a secondary color. It could have used a second coat of the same color, I should say. It seems like it's not finished. I mean, I'm looking at it, I'm tilting it from different angles, and it seems like... I mean, there's no real peeking through of the black. I feel like just a second coat of this orangey red could have just made that stand out a little bit more. The only other color that's on this guy is the gray in his utility belt, which has some of that additional red carried over, that orange red carried over from his logo. Other than that, again, there's not really much to be said for paint on this guy. So as you could probably guess at quality, QC on the paint issues, this guy doesn't have any. Uh, his posability though, his head rotates all the way around, hinging up and down. We're doing that already? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Was there something else that you wanted to talk about? No? Well, he does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. It's also to note as well, him and Kid Flash are the only two figures that don't have the big giant feet. Peg holes are also not located further down into the, the foot tread area, but actually located more so in the heels. Still wish this guy could have come with a, a display stand, but... I know I'm speaking to the masses. I'm crying, but nobody listens. We're good with the posability, though? Yes, everybody? I'm asking the mob. Mob says yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, mob. The head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and does not rock back and forth. The arms hinge out. 
you can rotate the arms all the way around as a swiveling in the bicep area and he also has a hinge in the elbow no no does not does not swivel here hands rotate however all the way around and hinge back and forth he has an upper torso crunch which also allows the the torso to rotate all the way around the legs split split and you can bring them forward you can bring them back you can top swivel cut right there it's about three quarters boop, 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 three quarter cut swivel on the thigh a double hinge on the knee and he also has a hinge in the foot now i will only just say this about my particular figure this is certainly not across the board but i've noticed that my figure is starting to get a little bit loose in the knees haven't had this figure out for very long maybe a night maybe or so uh, he is getting a little loose little loose in the knees we'll bring in the rest of the figures even though we're going to kind of touch base on all of these again when it, the time comes and we have a look at lobo just bring in kingdom come superman a uh, good paint just bad figure for standing get some display stands going for these guys uh, there's kyle rayner another great figure and uh surprisingly enough a figure that like we've already gotten kid flashes before i wasn't super i don't get super excited for for extension characters you know what i mean like you know, it's it's not Flash, it's like Kid Flash, and then there's another Flash, and there's another person playing Flash, and there's another Flash, and there yet another even more Flashes. But I actually like that figure as well. All of these figures are actually really quite good. Um, if I was to select some right now, I think my favorite would be the Terry McGinnis, followed very closely by Kyle Rayner. I mean, these figures are still good, um, but certainly not as good as these two and certainly not as good as Batman Beyond in the middle there or somewhat slightly in the middle. Yes, and final looks looking at Terry McGinnis' Batman Beyond. He is by far my favorite figure from this four-figure release. But he does have hiccups and he's got hiccups where you scratch your head and you think, why did they make decisions the way that they did? Case in point, what's the deal with his wings? I know we've talked about that already, but the wings are lopsided. Nobody else noticed this when they were approving the final figure. You know, the one that just before it goes to a mold, there's somebody that proves it and says, yeah, that's okay. Why did someone just say, yeah, that's okay, when the wings are clearly lopsided? If they only simply didn't use a hexagonal peg and a hexagonal hole, you could have easily just corrected and, and tapered off that so that they were at least leveled and balanced on both sides if you had used a circle. But they didn't use a circle. They used a hexagon. That makes no sense to me. Nor does it make any sense why the wings don't feel finished. Well, they don't look finished. The outside should have been black, in my own personal opinion, and the interior should have been the only thing that would have been done in this orangey red plastic. I mean, like looking at it, it feels like it's not finished. And it seems like it's not just me looking at it and thinking, well, maybe it was finished, maybe it wasn't finished, maybe this is what they settled on. It just looks like it should have been finished. And then, of course, there's the Batarangs. He comes with four of them, but he really only has one working hand to actually hold it. The closed fist, why couldn't they have just made that into a gripping fist? And instead, then he would be able to hold two Batarangs. He certainly doesn't need four. And maybe the two that they didn't end up using, that the, the money, the resources, could have been then worked into painting the outside sections of the wings. Ah, but still, like I said, these are a few hiccups, but you'll notice... All the hiccups are relevant to him not holding things properly or his wings. The figure is still a gorgeous representation of Batman Beyond and could eventually even take the place of my Batman Beyond from my DC Universe collection, which is one of the few figures that I still kept in my collection. And the only reason why I didn't do a comparison of that one with this guy here is just I couldn't find him. I don't know where I put him in my collection. He's probably in a tote somewhere, buried away, like everybody else has those totes that are buried away. And one day while I'll be gra grabbing something else, looking for a pot, looking for a pan, or looking for something else, I'll come across him and I'll say, oh, there's where he was. And then by then it'll be five or six years from now. I'll see if I can find him. I definitely do want to do a re-review on this guy. But I still think this is the superior Batman Beyond. And so far, one of the best, if not the best Batman Beyond figures that we have actually gotten. If not for the fact he does have a lopsided wing. Which is by far the worst problem with this figure. But again, it's not the figure. It's just the wing. Why did you have to use hexagonal peg? Mattel, what are you doing? You're killing me, Smalls. Either way, though, today we were having a look 
at the final figure, excluding, of course, Lobo. This was the DC Multiverse Collect and Connect Lobo Wave, and this was Batman Beyond. A really great figure. I would say recommended for my own personal experiences with these figures. This one is the one I would recommend the most of the four figures that we had a look at. I want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Multiverse or DC Universe figure reviews. There's playlists for both. And make sure you stay tuned to this channel because, of course, we're going to have a look at Lobo in the next review. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.